we have incredibly solid partnerships with broadcasters, with networks, and with talent. And a lot of that is because the people in the TV team have come out of the TV industry. We also shared a lot of data that showed that the audience around TV and Twitter is incredibly engaged. They stay loyal. They, they tune in. They tune in week after week after week. Uh, the live tweeting conversation around television actually drives viewing on VOD. It drives viewing on DVR, the kind of, you know, three days after, seven days after viewing on websites and apps. We also talked a lot about um, our best practices and what we do with our partners. And we also talked about Amplify, which is a, a Twitter's program to allow rights holders, you know, producers and broadcasters, to actually make money from the conversation that we build together on Twitter. So I think the interesting thing is we, we began as kind of an experiment, like three or four years ago. It's like, oh, we'll throw a hashtag up there. We'll say, follow us on Twitter. We'll see what happens. Well, a lot happened. And, and although Twitter wasn't designed as a second screen app for TV, every night tens of millions of people are using it just for that or for just that. And so what we've now seen is that broadcasters are going, wait a minute, this is part of our business. This is the part of the way that we can build loyalty, build engagement, help tell our stories better. And so the surprising part is one, that we've become part of their business and that they, they work with us now to, to figure out how to, their shows can be more successful in more than just a marketing function. We're actually part of the storytelling. And the really interesting thing that's happening uh, this time around at MIPCOM is that we're meeting with producers and they're saying, here's a show we're thinking about developing. Here's a show we're going to bring to market. Can we build Twitter into it right now? I think, well, social TV is already a big part of Twitter's business. It's a big part of why people use Twitter because you know, Twitter was designed to share the big moments in your life with everyone when they happen. And interestingly enough, for many millions of people, those big moments are, are watching TV, the, the shows that they love, the characters that they love. And so TV is already a big part of Twitter's business. I think the interesting thing is how much a part of the TV business Twitter will become. I think we're going to become a much bigger part of how people discover programs that they want to watch as, as, as you begin to watch whenever, wherever, on whatever kind of device you have, you're going to need a way to find the programming that you really want to see. It's going to become, I think, more a part of how you watch things and, and how you share them with people. And, and also it's going to be part of, of how uh, the media talks about uh, TV because the conversation that you used to say, everybody's buzzing about something or the water cooler conversation or the conversation around the kitchen table is now on Twitter. And, and, and we're seeing more and more that the conversation that happens on our platform spreads through the entire culture because the media is t using Twitter to represent the culture around TV. So I, a lot of what we're talking about, I think, right now is figuring out ways that people who aren't necessarily on the platform can engage with the Twitter conversation so that if you're a TV fan, there's other ways to find out what the Twitter conversation is or there's other ways for the Twitter conversation to help influence the way you're watching TV. I think there's also a lot of effort uh, on our team to, to be more what, what we call media forward. So you already see it in, in, you know, you can put four photos and tell a little story in a tweet. Uh, we have a native video app now where that plays right in Twitter. And so that kind of, you know, multimedia approach will allow people in television to tell richer stories around their shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think the first time I came to MIPCOM was in the late 90s. And, and the internet was, was kind of a, I think, I think there were dial-up modems then, right? It was like it was, a, it was a novelty. There was a lot of rumblings. What will the internet do to our business? How will it cut it apart? How will it change it? And I think what we're seeing is actually very, a very positive effect. There's more outlets for content in more places, and the content can find people more easily than when there were, you know, there were more blockers in, in the late 90s or in the 2000s, right? There, there was fewer networks, fewer ways to watch TV, fewer ways to delay watching TV. There's no such thing as binge viewing. There's, you know, there's no such thing as catching up the next day. So now you're actually able to, to interact with TV shows and relate to TV shows in a much better way. Uh, and TV is actually, I think, better than ever. It, it's, it's a hugely powerful force in the culture. 
And so then you have something like Twitter, where you kind of you see broadcasters and producers kind of going, oh, we can now engage with the audience 24-7, uh, uh, and they can watch our shows 24-7, and we're beginning to see that marriage really develop. Uh, so what my product does allows you to shop what you watch. I think we say that we cover all products from all of your popular TV shows. Uh, in a nutshell, we build a scene timeline for last night's episode of Scandal.